What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and continue learning about things you need to know before you visit the UK part two. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go check that out or stay right where you are right here. But in part one, I actually thought this video was gonna be mostly about how Americans cannot embarrass themselves when we travel to the UK, things we need to know and how to be respectful of the culture. And it has been a bit about that, but largely this has been a great video teaching various tips and just good ideas to do while vacationing in the UK, things to keep in mind. Like in part one, they were talking about traveling. Like Americans, when we think of the UK, just think of London. Oh, I'm gonna visit London. But there's so much more out there in the UK. Really amazing stuff to visit. And as simple and obvious as that seems, that's actually a good tip for Americans, like seriously. And he was talking about the money, different types of money and pounds you have to keep in mind. And the food, it's not all fish and chips in the UK. I thought every meal, Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Fish and chips, what a diet. That's how you live so long. No, not the case. Apparently there's lots and lots of diverse food options available and we kind of left off talking about the food a bit. So I'm excited not just to learn more about food, <laughs> but more things that I need to know before one visits the UK. This has been very enjoyable. So let's see what's left. Um, in terms of tipping, I would say like 10% tipping is fine here. If you're at oh. the pub, usually you don't really tip at the pub. You just tip at the restaurants. Oh, we just jumped right into it. Tipping. 10% um, tipping is okay in the UK. Is that true? I know, you know, in different parts of the world, tipping is not a thing. In America, tipping is a huge thing. You are downright rude if you don't tip. You're going to be chased out of the restaurant. Not really, but they might give you kind of a... Dirty look, you know, someone like that. <laughs> no one wants, no one wants, especially me, looking at them like that. But tipping in the United States, I'd actually say, I mean, I feel like 20% is expected, maybe more if you think they did a really, really good job. In, in America, you really are a judge of sorts. Kind of bizarre at times to think about, but in the UK, is it really 10% tip? Because that's, that's literally half as much as expected in America. I didn't know that. Um, when you are drinking your beer here, you can get cold beer and you can get not as cold beer. And you notice the <laughs> ales are the ones that aren't as cold. And what they actually do is they pull the beer. They pump it out. Okay, so it gets pumped out for you. That's an ale. Those are my favorite ones here. But if you want other beers, it's no problem. If you're up in Scotland, of course. Well, I mean, I'm not a beer aficionado. I don't know if that's blasphemous. I feel both like both America and the UK are actually known for beer in different ways, but I've never heard about getting to choose if you want cold beer or slightly slightly less cold beer or beer pumps and that is all. I suppose that could exist in some places in America, but I've never really noticed that. But then again, I'm not like the biggest beer head on the planet. So, either way, that sounds nice. Extra options course have the whiskey and things like that there's some really good stuff wait 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 what is this what what are we showing here mandatory sticky toffee pudding look at this thing look how sticky it is <laughs> i mean that sounds very strange but oddly good sticky toffee pudding really good stuff and the thing is wherever you're going like if you're on the coast have the fish pies have the mussels and stuff like that you can eat really well and the thing is throughout the uk there actually are some regional specialties and yes i could say like regional specialties try a starter of haggis balls what are haggis balls to see if you like it haggis what is haggis is that like animal organs or haggis i'm googling it What's haggis? Haggis is a savory pudding containing sheep's pluck. What is sheep's pluck? They say it like I should know. Minced with onion, oatmeal, suet, spices, salt. Do I have to Google sheep's pluck? This is like a never ending Google cycle. <laughs> a traditional haggis recipe describes haggis as sheep's pluck, which is heart, liver, and lungs minced together. 
That is... One... <laughs> like, that... When I say something does not exist in America in any shape or form, haggis. Haggis for sure. I can't even imagine what that tastes like. I guess people like it? Is it fried? Is it is that ball like a fried breadcrumb or dough at least to put something in that I can latch onto? Haggis balls and you dip them. Okay, but I I think if I can just put my bias aside and my my <laughs> my predisposition of foods that I have never even come close to trying. Uh, I like what he's saying, having an open mind about when you're in, di in the different regions of the UK, try the food from those areas. Like, I, I like that idea, in theory. Like haggis and fried Mars bars in, in Scotland, but you know, there's actually like really good, I and mean, those actually are pretty good, I'm not gonna lie to you. But there's <laughs> like regional dishes you're gonna have around. So when you go to your restaurant, especially if you're going to like the local pub or something like that, you might ask them, hey, what's the local specialty? What should I get when I'm here? Oh. And it might be, oh, well, it's Sunday. We have a Sunday roast, you should have that. Oh, ask the people at the pub and restaurant, what is there like a local special or a regional dish or something? That is a good idea. Like, I feel like for some Americans that comes as second nature, but I need to be told like it's okay to actually bug people a little bit in a friendly way and be like, hey, hey, what do you guys offer here? That's really UK. And they'll be like, Okay, American, let me set you straight and give me some haggis or something. What do we have here? Grab some tea and scones. Now that sounds like classic British food. Like, <laughs> this video is really opening my eyes to... <laughs> there's all the food I associated with the UK, and then there's a bunch. Like, in the last part one, they were talking about, like, Indian food or something. Curry, I think, and, like, I never thought or in Japanese food, and I never thought that could be something that's like really great found in the UK. Of that, you can do those things, okay? Now, for my friends, someone asked me about this. Well, I know England's supposed to be tea. Can I get my coffee? Believe <laughs> me, the Starbucks and the Costa Coffees, they're all over the place. Okay. You're not gonna have any problems with that, okay? Okay, no, no that's good news for Americans. <laughs> good news for Americans. Coffee, the Starbucks, is in the UK as well. They discovered it. I mean, I think, I've heard that like in America, our version of tea is coffee. Like where Brits drink tea, we would drink coffee. So I almost think though, when in the UK, like you gotta, you gotta get on board with the culture. I think that if there's any time to kind of embrace the tea, I think it's if you visited the UK. So forget the coffee for a bit. I, I, I'm making a declaration tea instead of coffee when you visit the UK. Another thing I always kind of worry about is, what about my Wi-Fi? What about my phone connections? Is, is, is there good Wi-Fi here? I've actually wondered that as well. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Not which historical amazing place am I gonna visit? What food am I gonna try? But is my cell phone gonna work okay? It's like seriously, I think a lot of people worry about that. Look, your 4G stuff is gonna work all over the UK. Okay. Um, I will say if you're okay. kind of like in the highlands of Scotland or you're in the back, in the in the hills of Wales, sometimes right. you won't have a signal there. So you're gonna be driving. Right. I do recommend getting the GPS on your car when you're there. But Oh, wow. So, okay, that's understandable. You're driving out into the literal middle of Scotland or Wales or something where there's a freaking castle and mountains and trees. It's okay if, your phone doesn't work. It might even be a good thing. Might even be a good thing. Actually, look at what's in front of you. But yeah, you might you might want to buy a real GPS for your car. Haven't thought about that. that yeah, this is these are like very practical tips. But in general, you're not gonna have any problems with your phones and getting your data and stuff like that when you're traveling around the UK. Okay. Um, also, many restaurants, cafes, hotels, bars have free internet. Just ask for right. the password, or they might actually have a sign that says "Sign up here." Here's the password. So right, you're not right, gonna right. have any problems staying connected while you are here. You know, a lot of people okay. when they travel, they worry about safety when they're going around. I find the UK to be pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, there's there's issues okay. just like you have anywhere else. But I don't. I mean, I've heard in various other videos that the UK is definitely, on average, on the whole, safer than America. Not that that's saying too much, although I don't like to sell America too short. I think American cities, particularly like the worst five or 10, 
that's where like 99% of the dangerous violent crime is. So most of America is like pretty darn safe. It's except for those like dangerous and areas of major cities. And I assume the UK is very similar, just on average, even more safe, even in the cities. I don't think there's any more or less dangerous things than other places in Europe or the US and stuff like that. So okay. just use your usual travel sense when you're there. Probably the okay. thing that I've seen the most that's gotten travelers is actually to say drive on the left. When you walk out <laughs> the street, make sure you look right first. <laughs> I was here a couple months ago with Liam and we were oh. about, I don't know, 10 meters behind this couple and they walked out and a, a truck hit him. It was horrible. I mean, luckily Liam didn't see it, but I did. It was just, it was just horrible. He saw someone get hit by a truck. What the heck? He actually saw someone get hit by a truck, but if only they had watched this video, huh? <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say. And <laughs> that is, that is kind of shocking. I hope, I'm positive that doesn't happen too often, but the fact that it happened enough that he happened to see that is disturbing. Yeah, so this is actually a really good tip especially for Americans, because cars are driving the opposite way that we are used to. When you're crossing a road, you have to look left. Or, <laughs> I'm gonna get hit by a car. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get hit by a car. You have to look right. <laughs> okay, uh, now, now I'm, I'm just gonna look both ways, right? Just gonna look both ways. Okay, I feel better. Because they weren't, they were looking the wrong way. And it, it does happen. It's not a joke, okay? You need to be careful when you're doing those things. That's going to be the most dangerous thing, especially wow. when you're taking your kids. Make sure you're like with them and paying attention because you forget as well. You're used to left, right, left, not right, left, right. So yeah. make sure you're paying attention that way. That's why I feel it's kind of the most dangerous kind of thing you're going to be worried about. Yeah. Now, of course, in the big cities, there's going to be parts of towns you don't go to, but as a tourist, oh. you're, you're not going to those places anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, one. Right, right. It's very similar. Like, there's just certain parts of town you don't go to because it's known for being dangerous or high crime. And I feel like that exists anywhere in the world. The danger I will tell you though, is you gotta realize the culture here in the UK, it's, I mean, it's not always prim and proper and stuff like that, but it's kind of <laughs> prim and proper. But one thing I'll tell you with the culture here is don't queue jump or line jump, don't. Uh, it, it is funny just touching on what he said is like Americans have this idea in our mind cemented in place that like the UK, Brit, Brits, Britain is fancy, proper, elegant, posh, all of it. And uh, it's funny that he's like, no, 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 that's not always the case. That's probably good advice to be kind of realistic. And, but on that note of being proper, don't cut in line, which <laughs> I mean, in America, we, if you're decent, you believe in that. Don't cut the queue. Don't jump the queue. Don't cut in line. But uh, it sounds like in the UK, you are going to be in a lot more heat uh, <laughs> in a way. It's just unthinkable. Kind of perm proper. But one thing I'll tell you with the culture here is don't queue jump or line jump. Don't cut yeah. line. I know yeah. some places lines are just like a big mass at the door. Oh no, here yeah. they're all about the line. They're all about the queue. So do not mess with that. That's <laughs> definitely one of those things that you don't do here. Okay, you don't mess with the lines. I actually really respect that. I, I really respect that and like that about the UK is the respectfulness, respectfulness around queues and lines. Like, it's very, I like that. I like that. Um, so do have a heads up for that one because you will upset people and they'll be like, excuse me, sir, the line's back there. So yep. you know, don't, don't piss anybody yep. off. Um, also, <laughs> another thing with the lines I should warn you about, when you're going to eat. Uh, that's the advice. <laughs> when things you need to know before visiting the UK, don't piss people off. Number one tip. Eat, you're gonna eat at a pub. Make sure you get your, your table number because you might order at the bar and then you gotta tell them you're on oh, table 38, you pay oh. and they bring it to you later. And then of course you okay. have the sights of the UK. Look, there is so much to see and do in each part of the country that you really should yeah. like have a Northern Ireland trip, have a Wales trip, have a Scotland trip, have a Midlands England trip, have a North trip, have a, a Southern England trip. Oh my gosh, there, wow. Even more than I was thinking of, like the North England, South England, of course, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Um, this is, again, so obvious, but such good advice. Like, I've slowly been chipping away, trying to see more stuff on YouTube around the UK, and it blows my mind how much stuff there is that Americans, like myself, 
have never heard of, never seen before, ever. Uh, especially when some Americans are just like, the UK, oh yeah. London's there, right? London, yes, I've heard of that. Have a London trip, because there's so much to see and do in the different ones. So if you're gonna be going to Wales, like I said, it's very much a nature thing. Snowdonia National Park, hiking in Brecon Beacons and stuff like that, the Pembrokeshire coast, they're just gorgeous. You're heading okay. up to Scotland, of course you gotta to go to Edinburgh and Edinburgh Castle and, and see <laughs> all the stuff there in the Royal Mile. I mean, it's just such a really cool city. And you go there and yes, you can see the, the William Wallace Memorial when you're there and you're when you're going by Stirling and Stirling Castle there. Eileen Donan Castle is really cool. Wow. If you're on your way to the Isle of Skye, that's a nice thing you can stop by when you're there in the Isle of Skye with the waterfalls coming off the side of the... This is like, man, yeah, he's like naming countless places and to be honest, I haven't heard of... 90% of what's coming out of his mouth. The cliffs, I mean, it's just gorgeous going to the Highlands, trying to see Nessie on Loch Ness. There's tons of stuff in Scotland to see. In the UK, like, or sorry, in England, my favorite town, I mean, I love London. I've been here so many times, but for me, the coolest, best place to go as a tourist is actually York in the north. It's kind of a pain to get to sometimes, okay. but if you can go there, it's fantastic. Like there's this part where the, the buildings- Oh my God, <laughs> he's getting very, very passionate and specific which I really appreciate, actually. I feel like this is probably one of the most fundamental tips for Americans in particular. Like, make time to see lots of the stuff, for lack of a better word. York is, I didn't even, York is part of London, or? It's almost touched together. It's just such a cool city you can go check out. Um, one thing I've liked to do uh, is actually, if you go to some of the state- Hold up. Oh, there. Best place to go as a tourist is actually York in the north. It's kind of- Oh no, yeah, York is a city. Like, I was like, what is he talking about? I thought he meant North London. North England, York, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I hope I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's actually, if you go to some of the stately homes, a lot of them are now like museums and you can go see them and visit them, see their right. gardens and stuff like that. The National Trust and other, other organizations have really done a great job keeping the historic homes like historic nice. and beautiful. So That's kind of the cool thing I've noticed too, is there's a lot of like heritage, buildings and museums that are kind of like meant for tourists and you can get your fill of that and then there's also a bunch of stuff like outside where you got to take a little trip around the UK to kind of go see it and it's like a castle or like a cliffside and there's lots of nature or there's lots of stuff in the cities themselves a lot of diverse things to see to go in and get those and if you're gonna go I recommend getting like the membership pass or something like that so you can save okay. money on the entry fees because once you go to like two or three of them you're actually gonna start saving money so look for the deals okay. when you are here because there's some stuff you can get that can really save you some cash okay now okay. some other great places to go I mean Jocelyn's favorite town though is Bath and when you go to Bath you have the, the Roman baths that are there Bath right with all the uh I mean, is it literally named after the baths? I mean, <laughs> you gotta see the, the baths in Bath. But for me, like you see the, the Royal Crescent there and you see the architecture there, the Georgian architecture. Wow. It's even got this like fountain built into the canal or, I mean, that's, that's cool as well. <laughs> I feel like he wasn't even trying to highlight this. Bath is just so gorgeous. Maybe we'll go down to Brighton and, and go down there and see the, the palace there. And it's just really cool. All the different things you have to see and do when you are here, seeing the, the cliffs yeah. of Dover, going to Canterbury and seeing, the, you know, they have, I mean, they have all the silly stuff like the animatronic Canterbury Tales things. They have those things too. <laughs> it's a Wait, cool city do? to check out. See, ch <laughs> go to other places throughout the country, going to the Peak District, going there, going to the Lake District. There's all these little districts you can go and enjoy and have a great time. Heck, just go spend some time in Kent, the Garden of England. They have- Kent? Districts? The Garden of England? I mean, this is almost too much for me to process. All these really cool places you can see and visit when you're here. So don't just stay in London. Go out and explore the UK because there's so much to enjoy and see when you are here. I've been here dozens of times right. for good reason because I really have enjoyed it. I brought my family here. I brought my parents here. I brought my friends here. I brought ex-girlfriends here. I brought all- Oh wait, they're eating the- uh these balls that I forget the name of as well. Man, he's talking about all the crazy places there are to visit. There's all this crazy food that I never imagined. It's just like, that's, I, I feel like he's really hammering this down as like a major point of when you go to the UK, Americans, like visit the whole UK. 
visit it all. I've got all kinds of people here because everybody has come. We've always had a great time. So I hope you have a great time too when you do come to the UK. Oh, if you're going to go to Northern Ireland, how can I forget about Northern Ireland? Yes, you can go to Belfast, Whiskey Trail kind of right, stuff. Right. But for me, the coolest thing to see in Northern Ireland is going to Giant's Causeway. It's Whoa, what is this thing? Giant's Causeway. They, these are like, uh, are these natural? Like hexagons built out of the rock? It's like these like, I don't know, pillars coming out of the, the sea kind of stuff. And what? the waves crashing on it. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So there's just that. But anyway, wow. I hope this helps you know a bit more about visiting the UK. If you want to learn more, check us huh. out on our website at waltersworld.com. Wow. That's good. That's very good. Again, this is by Walter's World. And I liked it. I got to give that a big like, thumbs up, because that was really good. I, uh, I didn't know what to expect. With this video, it's just like things you need to know before you visit the UK. I'm like, huh? Is this going to be like you have to drive on the correct side of the road? Which, ironically, turned out to be a major point of this video twice. And <laughs> important for your safety, honestly. Surprising enough. But also, he had a bunch of just really great tips to keep in mind to make your vacation, your visit, like worthwhile, like the, like to the max, maximum enjoyment, maximum benefit out of going to the UK. That's what this video was really about. And for that, I really appreciated it. See everything, get all the foods, try not to get hit by a car and have a great time. Don't annoy people. That's what I got. So I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. Uh, perhaps with anything you think people should know before visiting the UK. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and UK culture, stuff about the UK I've never learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.